In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Urbit on your local computer. Urbit needs to run on a Unix machine of some kind, so Windows isn't yet supported. OK, so to begin, let's go to the Urbit website at urbit.org, then click Docs, and then Install. And that should take you to this page, which will uh, give you the instructions on how to do the installation. Scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a few packages for some popular operating systems. This is probably the easiest way to install Urbit using one of these packages. Otherwise, you can scroll down a little bit more and install from source, and that's what I'm going to do today. So to begin, I'll need to download the source tarball, which I've already taken the liberty of doing. Scroll down a little bit more, and you'll see that Urbit has a number of dependencies. You can take care of these with a one-liner from this list here. Um, so I'm on uh, Ubuntu, so I would want to uh, copy and paste this line into my bash uh, terminal. So I will go ahead and copy that on my clipboard, switch to the terminal, and take care of that. OK, I'll head back to the website, scroll down a little bit more, and then I'll see instructions on how to clone and make the installation files for Urbit. OK, so one thing I need to do is unzip the tarball. So I'll head back to the terminal and do that. And you'll see a new directory has been created. So I'll go in there, urbit-0.4.3 in this case, because I'm installing urbit version 0.4.3. I'll take a look in there. And uh, now I'm ready to uh, make those files. And once that done, uh, I'll have all the installation files ready. OK, so while that's happening, that'll take a moment. I'll head back to the website scroll down a little bit more, and I'll, I can see this last line, which actually um, installs Urbit on my computer. This last argument that you'll input is the path where your Urbit files are going to be. So uh, you can actually adjust this if you like. Um, but uh, for today, I'm just going to keep the, e uh, the default location. So I'll go ahead and copy that into my clipboard. So I'll be ready to enter that in the terminal. OK, so I'll head back to the terminal. It's just finished uh, making the installation files. Run that. And then um, I should have Urbit installed now. So I'll type in Urbit just to see. And it should give me um, a few instructions on how to run Urbit uh, from the command line. And it does. OK, so that works. Good. So now that we've got Urbit installed, um, now we need to figure out how to uh, boot our actual virtual machine, how to boot our Urbit. So let's head back to the Urbit website and go to the Setup page. To get here, go to urbit.org, then Docs, and then Setup. OK, so once here, I can scroll down. And then uh, we'll actually have a couple of options. So and it'll depend on your situation. If you've got an invitation to Urbit, uh, let's say you've got an invitation to a planet, you'll want to run this line here. The important thing to, look, to note is that if, for instance, you've got that invitation to boot a planet, you'll put the planet name in this part of the argument. And then you'll put the ticket at the end. And a ticket is essentially a code that says you're authorized to boot that planet. That's your planet. OK, otherwise, if you don't have an invitation, uh, that's OK. You don't need an invitation to uh, boot an orbit. You'll just need to boot a comet. So you'll run this instruction here. OK, so let's head back to the terminal and do just that. Urbit-c for create, because we're making a new Urbit. And then uh, I'll input the name of the peer of the Urbit that I'm booting. And I'm just going to use new comet, because it's new comet. Uh, your peer is just the directory that your virtual machine lives in. And uh, it has nothing to do with your identity on the Urbit network. OK, so now our Urbit is booting. As this is happening, I want to point out one thing first. You'll notice the line loom mapped 2048 megabytes. What that means is Urbit is checking to make sure that you have two gigabytes of RAM available. It's not that it's necessarily going to use that RAM. It just wants to see that it's there. Because I'm installing on a local computer, uh, that's not a problem. And I imagine most of the time when you're installing locally, that's not an issue. On the other hand, if you're installing in the cloud, you might not have an instance with two gigabytes of RAM available to you. That's OK. You'll just need to, uh, to do a, set, a swap file, set up a swap file. Um, all the major cloud providers um, will either provide instructions on how to do that, or they're easy to find with a, a little bit of searching. So once you do that, you should be set, 
and your Urbit should be uh, good to go uh, for, for booting up. Okay, so um, we're in the boot process. If you look at the bottom, you'll see the instructions, or you'll see the, the notice saying, awaiting hood, this may take a few minutes. So what happens uh, initially is that your Urbit, your, your ship, is in its larval stage. Um, the, at the very beginning, all it can do is read and run raw knock. Knock is a low-level functional programming language. Uh, the knock function is the, the fundamental function of your Urbit. That's what it does. But your Urbit doesn't know anything yet, so it has to receive some things from over the, or the Urbit network uh, before it can do other things and be more practical for you. So you'll see that it's getting some things from Zod in this case, because I'm a comment, I'm booting from uh, Zod, that, that's the parent of my ship. Um, so the first thing that your Urbit gets is Hoon. Hoon is a higher level functional programming language that compiles to Knock. And once it gets that, uh, then your, your virtual machine knows how to run Hoon. At that point, uh, you get sent Arvo, the operating system for your virtual machine, and it's written in Hoon. And then uh, once you have Arvo, you're going to get a couple of apps. And we're going to talk about a couple of those apps today. Uh, we're going to talk about Dojo, and we're going to talk about another app called Talk. So Dojo is the command line interface of your Urbit. It's also a REPL, which means that you can input um, Hoon commands and get instant feedback on how they work. So you'll see now that actually the boot process just finished. I mentioned this is a REPL, so let's run a, a simple Hoon command uh, just to see how that works. So I've added two numbers together and got an answer. So uh, that's pretty neat. So good. Um, now let's look at the, the prompt here. I see Hilfer Solpix Dojo. So I mentioned that Dojo is the command line, so that part makes sense. But what's Hilfer Solpix? That's actually an abbreviation of your comet's name, the, the abbreviation of your identity. To see the whole thing, put in our. And you'll see this uh, relatively long string. So we say we see Hilfer, Fawcett, Fidna, Paltim, and so on. I won't read the whole thing. This, this, uh, this fairly long string is taking the place of your IP address. Uh, and actually, we can view it another way. Let's cast it to an unsigned decimal. That's just a fancy way of saying we want to look at the number being represented by that phonetic string. And then we see this really long number. This is a 128-bit number. Um, it's, a, it's, it's fairly long in particular because this is a comet. And, uh, and so once you see that, you'll see that the, the phonetic version is a little bit more memorable, easier to, to say, and, uh, and so on. Now, um, it's not really easy because it's still a really long name, but uh, the advantage is a little bit more clear when you're talking about a planet. So, uh, for instance, my planet name on Urbit is Taglux Nidsep. And it sounds strange, it sounds like it might be from a foreign language, but it's actually got as much information in, in that as, uh, as there is in an IP address, and it's a, a little bit more memorable. Um, so that's convenient, that's, that's nice. All right, so now that we've got our Urbit started and we, we've, we've done a couple things, let's take a look at what we have. So I'm going to run the ls generator. And so I run uh, ls, and then I have the percent sign. The percent sign just says I want to look at the current directory, and the current directory in this case is the home directory. So we see some directories here. App is for your applications. Arvo is for the operating system. If you look all the way to the right, you'll see the web directory, and uh, that's actually for your web server. Urbit right now is already a functioning web server. So um, if you want to set up a simple blog, you can do that, uh, and that's, uh, that's nice. You've already got that functionality. Um, you'll also see the gen directory. I mentioned a second ago that ls is a generator. The generators are, are those commands that you, you run uh, by preceding them with a plus sign. So let's, let's take a look in there. And we'll see a, a bunch of generators now. Um, uh, some of these might look familiar, others uh, not as much. Um, you see the cat generator. Let's, let's run that. I bet you can guess what that does. And we'll use this to look inside hello slash hoon. Once we do that, we see a little bit of uh, hoon language. This is the contents of, uh, these are the contents of uh, hello slash hoon. Uh, and so, um, so we're seeing a little bit of hoon now. Um, and if it looks a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, strange, it's not as complicated as it looks actually. Once you get used to the rune structure, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. Okay, so um, so we've looked inside this hello 
file, let's actually run it. It takes as an argument a string in single quotes. So that says, hello, Josh. Um, my name is Josh, so um, that's nice. OK, so um, great. One thing about booting a new ship is that, um, at least initially, the file structure is not visible to you from Linux. So if you're, you're in your bash prompt, you won't be able to see any of the, the this stuff that we're looking at in Dojo. To change that, you can mount your home directory, and that will make it visible to Linux. So um, I, right, right here, I'm mounting, uh, I'm, I'm saying percent sign for my current directory, which again, is still the home directory. Uh, but you can mount any subdirectory if you like. I, I generally mount everything because I find that more convenient. Okay, so, and, and you'll notice that I get a greater than equal sign. Um, your, your dojo will return that when it's received and followed an instruction you've given it. Okay, so uh, just to prove it to you, uh, let's actually head back out to bash and, and look at the file structure from there. So to leave your urbit, hit control D. And now your urbit uh, virtual computer is not running at the moment. So um, let's go into our peer and take a look. And now we'll see a home directory. We would not have seen that if we hadn't, um, if we hadn't mounted it. Okay, so and then now that we look inside, we see the same directories we saw from uh, within a Dojo. Okay, so let's head back out and get back into our ship. So we do that through uh, just urbit and then new comment. I, I get rid of the the dash c uh, because I'm not creating it this time. I'm just uh, restarting an already booted uh, ship. You only boot one time, so I'm not rebooting here. I'm just getting back into it. Okay, so uh, now that I'm back here, uh, let's send a message. Uh, to do that, you can use the hi command, and then you say uh, the name of the ship you want to send a message to. So I'll send one to Taglux Nidsep. That's the name of, of my planet. And the message will just be, hello, Taglux. And then once I do that, I get hi, Taglux Nidsep successful. So that's just, Dojo telling me that the message was received, and I have a confirmation sent back. And it also says Taglux Nidsep is your neighbor because uh, now I'm, uh, I'm I directly know uh, where to I know directly where to go to uh, to find Taglux Nidsep on the network. Okay, so um, that's all I want to mention about Dojo. Let's head into Talk. To switch from Dojo to Talk, hit Control X. You'll notice that your prompt changes from Dojo to Talk now. Uh, if you want to head back to Dojo, just hit Control X again, and the prompt changes back. But we'll, we'll stay and talk for a second. And then um, at this point, we can't talk to a, a group of people just yet. Um, so if we want to uh, to get into a room and, uh, and join the conversation, we'll have to join it. So we'll use Join. We'll do this through the star Marzod. And then we'll join the station Urbit-Meta. Urbit-Meta is an all-purpose uh, discussion room for anything Urbit. So if you're just wanting to know how the network works and you have questions about that, there are people in there who will be patient and answer your questions. If you're interested in learning Hoon and you're working on that, um, uh, you can ask people about Hoon there. Um, or Knock if you want to learn Knock, uh, anything you like. Uh, and, and don't feel like your questions are, are, uh, are not intelligent enough or that you don't know enough. It's a really friendly group, very patient. So um, they understand Urbit is a whole different thing from what most people are used to. So uh, yeah, just get in there and, and uh, just ask questions. Uh, we, we definitely want to encourage people to learn uh, as much as they can. Okay, so now we're in Urbit Meta. So um, let's send a message out to the, the world of Urbit Meta. Just hello world, and I misspelled that. That's embarrassing. Let's spell it right. Okay, and now we are talking to the world at large. And then you'll see uh, someone has responded with hello. This is Lanrex Falrol. Uh, this isn't a person. This is actually a bot that's in Urbit Meta, and you can tell it's a bot because uh, it precedes everything it says with two colons. Okay, so um, I can say, uh, you're welcome. That's strange. Thanks, TalkBot. Thank him for being so welcoming, I suppose. And then uh, he'll say, you're welcome, because he's a very polite TalkBot. He's a very good boy. OK, so um, one other thing you can do with the TalkBot is you can do uh, pings uh, just to see how the, the Urbit network is doing at the moment. Uh, so uh, TalkBot's not just for frivolous chat. He's also um, practical, too. OK, and uh, 
I think that's all I really want to say about that. I'll head back to Dojo. Um, at this point, you should have your uh, Urbit all set up and you're ready to explore the Urbit universe. So thanks for watching this video. Be on the lookout for more videos that are upcoming that will teach you more about Urbit.